Hello everyone, it's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com um, and I want to first assure you that it looks like my cat's sleeping in my spider's tank right now, <laughs> but I assure you Ava's just behind here on the couch and Spidey is safe right here. <laughs> um, today I wanted to talk about my experience with rose hair tarantula. Spidey right here is a Gramostilla rosea, which is also known as a Chilean rose hair. This is a very popular tarantula. Um, especially for beginners, but I wanted to talk about my experience with rose hair tarantula because I actually don't believe that rose hair should be recommended for beginners anymore. Um, I know that previously they were highly popular and recommended for beginners, but that has definitely changed over time, and especially as I've gotten more experience with this kind of spider. So I want to kind of give my thoughts and my experience with rose hair tarantulas in case any beginners are thinking about getting one as their first spider. Now, rosehair tarantulas are not actually as easy to get as they used to be. They used to be very cheap and readily available in local pet stores um, or tarantula websites, anywhere really. Um, but thanks to an importation ban, they're not actually readily available anymore, and they're actually a lot more expensive now. So that might also deter beginners from getting a rosehair tarantula because they're just not as readily available anymore or as cheap as they used to be. I think I got Spidey for like 25 bucks. I think at this time they're going for over a hundred dollars now. So that's another reason why I wouldn't recommend them for beginners. Um, but also, you know, despite being very hardy, I will say that they are hardy but they have this reputation for being really docile, which is why people do recommend them for beginners. And I would say this actually has some mixed reviews. A lot of tarantula owners have said that this spider is actually very moody, temperamental, and unpredictable. So when you're a beginner, you might wanna really take that into account. My personal experience with Spidey um, is that she is, is pretty calm most of the time. For many, many years, um, for most of the time, she has been very sweet, calm, um, shy, timid, um, really lived up to that like docile reputation. Um, but sometimes she's not that much. And you know, she might just be more lazy and docile because she's old. Spidey's pretty elderly. So I don't know what she was like in her younger years. I got her from a local pet store well into her adult years, so I don't know. And her molts are several years apart now. So she's up there in age. So that could be why she's really calm and mellowed out. But her mood does change. Um, I've noticed that after a molt, when she's hungry, she's um, a little bit more antsy, a very fast to move around her tank, um, where she usually will just sit in one area when she's feeling calm. Um, she tends to um, be very reactive to things moving around her tank because I guess she's hungry. Um, so a bit more, I don't want to say aggressive, but you know, just more antsy. Um, and especially, um, now, after this past molt, um, she has been a lot more hungry and she's very quick to jump on things in her tank. Um, you know, normally I'd be able to move things around in her tank without a problem. Um, but it seems like over the last few weeks, even though she's been eating kind of regularly, um, she has been very possessive over her water dish. <laughs> um, if I do anything around the water dish, she tends to run over right away. Um, one time when I was even putting some uh, water in the water dish with a straw while she was nearby. She jumped in the water dish and tried to take my straw away from me. So I think she's kind of going through a mood swing right now. <laughs> um, and you know, any spider can do that, but I don't want to give the impression that just because rose hair tarantulas have like this docile reputation that they're always in a calm mood. That's not, that's not true. It's not even true for Spidey, who's extremely sweet and calm. Um, and some tarantula rose hairs are extremely moody. Um, I've, I've seen lots of videos of a very um, pissed off rose hair tarantula. <laughs> uh, I'm going to leave a link to that below. But, um, you know, so not all spiders are the same. This goes for any species of spider. Um, but the more rose hair tarantulas I talk to, the more these mood swings are being reported. So that's something you want to take into consideration as a beginner and something I really want to stress because you might really think just because it's a rose hair tarantula that it's not going to be very defensive, um, not going to feel threatened all the time, not going to want to threat pose all the time. And that's not always true. Despite some tarantulas having reputations, every spider is different. So you really need to take that into account. One of the other biggest things that I would stress that is not good for beginners when we're thinking about getting a rosehair tarantula 
is not only the mood swings, but they also go through like these mood swings with their appetite. These tarantulas in particular are just infamous for just randomly fasting. And this is something that I've experienced firsthand with Spidey. She fasts like 80% of the time. And when I was a new tarantula owner, this was extremely stressful. Um, I thought for the first year that I had her that there was just something really wrong with her. I was worried every day. I would just try to feed her and nothing would happen. <laughs> um, and now that I've had her for over five years or maybe even over six years, um, I've relaxed a lot into this. I know that that is just her cycle and her way. And she still fasts a lot, even if it's not having to do with a mole. You know, in other times she's gone well over a year and a half um, and she was not in pre mold at all. She just decided to stop eating one day and then started randomly one day when I tried again. Um, and when you're a new tarantula owner, this can be really, really stressful because you haven't really gotten into a rhythm with your spider and you, you know, you need to, you need to learn things about feeding. You need to learn things about pre mold and stuff like that. So having an unreliable spider like this, um, can really rob you of getting your confidence as a tarantula keeper. So I would recommend getting a tarantula that eats more regularly. Unfortunately, this species in particular, rosehair tarantulas, they just have these really weird appetites, really weird fasting periods, and they're infamous for it. So choosing a different beginner spider could save you a lot of stress in the long run. Overall, I think the rosehair tarantulas are a great species, and I would still recommend them. I think they're wonderful. I love Spidey. I love taking care of her. I love all the weird things about her. I love her mood swings, and I love her weird fasting things that she does with her food. Um, I, I love her, uh, and I would highly recommend this species. I think that it's extremely underrated, um, and I think they're great, but for a beginner, I would say it might not be appropriate just because of the confusing feeding cycles and um, the unreliable temper temperament that can sometimes happen with this species. Um, but if you really want a rosehair tarantula, then get one. I don't want this to discourage you, but just be aware of these things and being aware that some things that are being promoted about their reputation are not necessarily correct. So yeah, the more you know, <laughs> the easier it will be for you to gain confidence as a tarantula keeper and to become a better tarantula keeper. But anyway, um, if you have a rosehair tarantula and there are certain things that you've noticed about them that also might not be appropriate for beginners, let me know. Um, please leave a comment. And if you're interested in getting more weekly tarantula info, you can either subscribe to my channel um, or you can sign up for my Tarantula Tuesday newsletter that comes out every Tuesday um, by clicking on the link in the description below. It is called the newsletter sign up link. Uh, anyway, guys, I hope you found this helpful. And um, if you think that there are other species that would be much more reliable and, and beginner friendly for new tarantula owners, please um, give me your feedback in the comment. Until next time, guys. Thank you. Bye.